What is up, everyone? JD here. Hope you're doing well today. We're going to be doing my full review for the Kubi Tidious. Let's get into it. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do some size comparisons. We'll do profile comparison, check the weight on this one, and then we'll jump into my thoughts and impressions. So I'm going to kick it off with the Spyderco Para 3. As you can see, the Tidious is a full-size knife, and here it is against the Spyderco Shaman. So definitely more in line with size of the Shaman. Really nice full-size knife. I'm digging it. All right, we're going to go ahead and move the Para 3 out of the way, and we're going to bring in the... Uh, Migaron Kyrick, Kyrick. I'm not quite sure if I'm saying that right. And then we'll go ahead and move the uh, Shaman out of the way. And we're going to bring out the Tactile Maverick as I completely whiff. So I wanted to bring the Kyrick out here because I consider this more of a medium sized EDC. And you can see the Tidious, which continues to shake on that pocket clip, is more full sized. And even though the Maverick is a more slender build, it is equal in length to that Maverick. All right, let's go ahead and move the Moriarl out and we're gonna bring in a budget Megaron and that is going to be the Moriarl. I think I just called the Kyrex the Moriarl. I was thinking about bringing this one in. So a budget medium knife, really nice comparison here. You can see from the size of it, the Kubi is definitely full size. And then here it is against the Civivi Praxis. Now the Praxis is just a little bit longer in blade length, but very similar handle length when you're looking from the pivot. All right, let's do some quick profile comparisons because this knife is actually very surprisingly thin. And I really do like that about the knife. So we'll do it against the Praxis first. And you can see here the Praxis and the Kubi, I would actually call them about even. They look about even, and that's one of the things that I love about the Praxis. It is a nice thin knife. And then we'll bring the other full-size knife out here, and that is going to be the Shaman. And as you can see against the Shaman, same thing. It's about the same thickness. So I like the way that that feels in that profile. going to grab the scale and do a quick weight check. If I recall, this one's over 5 feels like it's over five ounces. Nope, right at five ounces on the nose. All right, let's go ahead and jump into my thoughts and impressions on the Tidious. The first thing that I do want to talk about is this has very nicely done titanium scales that have the micro milling lines on there. You can see my fingerprints all over the knife, and I really like the ergos on this one. It's very well done. It's knocked down all around the edges here. So you don't have any hot spots. You have a little, little bit of a scratchy spot right here. And then when you go to, I'm trying to remember if it's when you lift up or if it's just when you're moving. Yeah, it's just when you're moving into this position here for the natural position that you kind of can feel it, but it's not super sharp. It's just a little scratchy. Um, so I feel like they did a pretty good job all the way around. Access to the lock bar is really good, and you're coming in at about 50% lock up. I can easily get to it here. Now, this one does have a detent ramp, so you do got to get it over the ramp a little bit. If you're trying to get it to drop shut, what I recommend is just kind of making sure that you shake it really easy that first time. Or like you see there, I'm just using my finger to kind of get it past that ramp. The Access to the opening hole is really well done. It's really nice for the reverse flick. I can even thumb flick this one fairly comfortable. I like thumb studs for thumb flicks more than I like the opening hole, but I love the opening hole for the reverse deployment. Really good jimping here and a really well done flipper tab. Really, this one here is well above the pivot, so you got lots of torque and leverage here for that opening. That is a very light push on that switch. I'm not pushing it hard, and it just flies right out because it has such a well-tuned detent on here. I think they did a really good job with the Anno on both the scales and the hardware. The pocket clip, I can't remember. Yeah, pocket clip is also titanium, but if you look inside this one, I can't quite tell how they anodized it. You can still... You can see a little bit of bronze on the inside here. So I don't know if maybe they actually are just doing it by dabbing it with the water as opposed to submerging it. But you can kind of see, you know, and that's not that big a deal, but you can see uh, on the underside that it's more of that copperish color. 
And I think that might be just because of the residual water or maybe how they're doing the anodization. But you can tell the hardware has been anodized because on the inside, and this will happen sometimes when you get little air pockets, you can see a little bit of the bronze in there as well because that that air pocket keeps the water from making direct contact and it's kind of moving around and you can kind of see it on the uh, other screws here as well for the pivot and for the lock bar insert. So everything is titanium on the outside. I imagine since these standoffs are not colored that they're steel we can do the disassembly and check for hardware and clean it as well when we get to the end of this video and i'll check to see if those um, standoffs are steel or not as far as the action goes you got ceramic bearings i believe these are on yeah phosphor bronze housing um, so that's good you don't have to worry about any corrosion and even if it was the nylon washers they're really tough those would be fine too the action is really good it had a little bit of scratchiness grittiness i would call it grittiness on the closing and that has really started to go away as well um I'm not sure if you can really see it from here, but we'll take a good look at it here in a minute when we take this one apart. But you can see the track is wearing in nicely. You got a nice detent hole. And your material for the blade steel, since we're here, is 14C28N. And it seems like it's pretty well done. The thickness is good. It's um, not the thinnest or the sliciest edge I've ever encountered. I would call it a little bit underneath of a medium thickness. So it does cut really well. And I actually used this the other day. We had some patio furniture come in and it had big thick boxes that they were um, shipped in. And I used this to break one of the two boxes that they came in down and it performed really well. And I did end up taking this one and putting a fresh edge on it. And so far, with the uh, factory edge taken completely away and putting a fresh edge on here, it's done really well. I wasn't sure about that plunge grind, but after one sharpening, I don't have a smile yet. So that is a good sign, but I can tell I'm really close to that plunge grind. So it will potentially get there. But what I would say to remedy this, if you're competent and you know how to use a Dremel, I would just go ahead and extend that sharpening choil out and just make it a full four finger choil. Cause this really here, I can only get my first finger in with the larger hands. Anything more than that, I'm going to be touching the edge of the blade. So I would recommend just going straight out a little bit and then curving it down until you get to the point you lose about that much uh, blade's edge by getting that to be a full forward finger choil. So probably about around a half to three quarters of an inch going out and you would still honestly have a ton left. And that's probably what I'll end up doing here because I think it would just be that much more comfortable. What else can I talk about on here before we get into the disassembly? Got a lanyard hole here. I'm not a lanyard fan, so that really doesn't matter to me, but it doesn't prioritize the pocket clip. Pocket clip carries nice and deep on this one. I actually have my organizer here today. Let me use the backside so you can see how it goes into the pocket. It goes in really well, nice and smooth. Has uh, I don't want to lose my pen here, so I'm just going to move that. It has good retention. Um, the knife is heavy, though, so if you... You know, it, it, pants are going to be a little bit thicker than this. This is a thin material, um, but it has good retention. I've never had it actually start to slip out of my pants pocket. The canvas on here is going to be a little bit different, and it's a different texture altogether. But it, it has good retention, no tapping from the factory. I've had it in and out of the pocket a decent amount. I carried it directly in the pocket, not in the organizer. So you do have that thicker material that pulls on there. The spring tension's okay. It's not the strongest. So the pocket clip, I think, is, you know, it's a pass. It's not the best. It's not the worst. Um, it certainly functions very well, especially going in and out. It goes in and out really smooth. I've had no concerns, even though just now I wanted to slide out of that organizer a little bit. Um, anything else I want to talk about? The biggest thing about here that is surprising is that you're getting titanium hardware, you're getting titanium scales that are micro milled, titanium fold over pocket clip, and 14C28N for around $100. Now they're running sales on these. I've seen people say that they can get them as low as, I want to say like mid 70s i think is what i saw something recently about that and that's just crazy to me that you can get 14 c28 in and titanium for under 80 dollars on a sale on these that is bananas 
you can't afford eighty dollars my alternative recommendation for comfort you have it that same style choil where you can get that first finger in there but you can't really go past that because you're going to be on the blade's edge um, you're going to get 9 cr 18 mov which is a very good everyday carry steel just for your basic cutting task getting into stuff maybe breaking down a couple boxes um, and it's going to be really thin and slicey for the size of the knife it's uh, even more thin of a blade stock than what you see here on the Tidius. This is just a, I mean, it's a highly underrated knife. Um, and there's a reason that I talk so much about it and the praise on it. The 9C on it is, uh, 9C are on it is done really well. Uh, it has performed really well. I love the fact that they blackwashed it because it just kind of hides all of the uh, wear from going through things, materials. And, you know, it's just a really well done knife. It's still on its factory bearings. It hasn't developed any lock rock or any side to side play. You even get a very well done, smooth, all blacked out burlap micarta, which I think looks better than the regular natural micarta, which I'm actually a fan of. All of that for what, under 40 bucks? Is it under 40 still? Hopefully my editor can throw that on the screen. This is a great knife. Easy to recommend. Um, the materials that you're getting, the performance, the build quality, the tolerances are all there. Let's go ahead and jump into a quick disassembly and we'll take a look on the inside of this knife and wrap everything up. Okay, we got the mat out here. We got the knife out here. Let's grab our Weeha bits. I recommend those and they're linked down in the description. I will also do my best to link this variant wherever I can find it for you. This is going to have all T8 hardware except I believe in the pocket clip. I think the pocket clip is, is, is oh, these are backwards, are going to be um, T6. I had those, I put those back wrong. These bits are the um, combat, are, there, are they on? They're the Griffin tool, and I no, these are the combat bead, and I think they're on Griffin Tools website. I think that's right. <laughs> All right, so this standoff here is going to be this back pocket clip. If you don't want to remove the entire uh, clip just for the disassembly and maintenance, which you don't need to do, you can just take that out or back it out as far as it'll go, and you'll be done with your T6. Now you can grab your T8. You can go on to the next hardware bolt for the disassembly. The tolerances on these bolts are really nice. They fit very snug, but my complaint is they're a little shallow, so it's working on the very tip of the hardware. If they could just, uh, Civivi does a really good job with these Civivi's hardware. Even on the older Praxis, it, it goes in just a skosh deeper into the bit, uh, to the head which I really appreciate. So let's go ahead and get this apart. Um, honestly, it, it would be up to you if you want to install skiffs on this knife. You very well could, and you're going to see a slight improvement on the action, but it really isn't going to need it. So it's a very simple construction. You can see here, you got your lock bar insert, you have your washers, your stop pin, your standoffs, which I said we would check to see if they're steel. Wow. They're not steel, unless this magnet is. No, yeah, it's definitely working really well. So they are titanium standoffs. They just chose not to anodize them, which makes this even more impressive for the money. That is bananas. But all I was saying is you got ceramic balls here. Make note that the closed side is facing the blade, and then it's housed down into the scale. So you see it has a little bit of a lip there. So this... The, um, and the reason I point that out is it's going to help prevent debris from getting down in there. So at this point, what you can do is you can clean it up, clean up your bearings. I actually checked all of this when I initially got it. I just took it apart, cleaned it, and reassembled it. Um, what I'll just do now is since we have it apart, I'm going to give it another quick clean. And we'll be right back. All right, we are back. Everything is cleaned up. What all I've done here is just take a little bit of lube and put it on each of the bearings directly. And then I took a little bit of lube and put that on the pivot itself. So we can go ahead and finish up the reassembly. And I just did that again, just to save a little bit of time, a little bit of a drop right there for your detent track. You can go ahead and start with the reassembly. What I normally recommend is taking your lock pin or stop pin out and putting that in on the other side before putting it together. But everything here on 
this build is so well done that I really don't think that you have to worry about that. Once it's locked in and the stop pin is in there, it's not going to go anywhere. You should be good to go. You can go ahead. My um, bolt for the pocket clip kind of fell out when I turned it over. Go ahead and reinstall your standoff bolts first. And you can go ahead and sandwich it down and snug those in. Be very careful with your T6. You don't want to over torque that one or your T8s. Even though they are T8, again, they are a little bit shallow on the head themselves. So you just want to make sure that you're snugging them up and giving just a little bit of pressure beyond that just to make sure that it has seated correctly. Uh, one thing that I've started doing a little bit different here lately is I've gone ahead and moved the lock bar over and just looked to make sure the centering isn't there already because what's going to happen when you pull the pivot, the standoff or the opposite side of the bolt that you're tor torquing in, it's going to pull that knife and it should cause it to center up. So we'll go ahead. You saw it was favoring the show side. We're going to go ahead and tighten this down get to a point where it stops with just a little bit of resistance you're going to back it out just a tiny bit that was a very small movement and then we'll start making our adjustments from here so same action feels really smooth the knife came immediately center on the install so i'm just going to check it for blade play there is no play i'm happy with the amount of action that it has i'll keep an eye on it just to make sure that the pivot bolt doesn't back out and we should be good to go. But all in all, 100 bucks or less, even sometimes less than 80 on us on sale. Um, fantastic value. 14C28N, it is blasted, which is not my favorite, but if you're not in an area that you have to worry about corrosion, then it's a non-issue. If you are, they do make a product that you can rub onto the blade, let it sit for a little while and just dry it clean. It is food safe and it will help protect on bead blasted blades or blades that are prone to rusting from having any issues. 14C28N by itself, normally corrosive resistant, but blasting a knife can cause it to have little spots that may have blemishes in it. It's just what happens. You're getting micro mill titanium. And again, the micro milling on here is really well done and you know I'm taking an oily rag to clean this knife which might not be the best way to show it to you but the micro milling on here is really well done it's not so much that it's a turn off and it's not super visible you know from a distance it just looks like it has a matte finish up close you can really see the micro milling and it adds really good confidence for that grip very confident inspiring so i really like this one i think it's a fantastic value i think it's very well tuned it has very good action you're getting um a lot for your money but you're getting good performance and like i said so far i don't know if i have paper around i have a little bit left hang on this will actually be a good test because i did have something come in the other day where i was put using it on the box so yeah it's gotten a few blemishes since i put the new edge on there it looks like it has a spot but for the most part i feel like it's held up really well um, I have carried it and used it plenty and the edge that I threw on here even though it is starting I left it a little bit toothier too because I use it on stuff that's a little bit thicker so I don't go for a super thin slicey edge on this type of knife um, because of how I use these these are really comfortable to hold so I like them to have a little bit more bite to the edge but as you can see outside of that one spot which I think a strop honestly would just completely get rid of that it has ooh, that might have been me did I hit the oh okay it's right yeah it's right actually close and that makes sense because that's kind of where I start my cuts on cardboard um, really close to the edge and the strop's gonna fix that and that's a beautiful thing about uh, 14c 28n nitro V VG10, 10CR, 154CM, even S30V, which is more of a more of a higher level super steel than these, are really easy to edge maintenance if you don't want to have to sharpen your knife all the time. Anyway, let me know what you think about the Cubitidius. Do you have this model, and what color did you get? Because they actually have a few options. They have the raw titanium. They got the blue, the green. I think they had a purple. 
maybe i'm not sure let me know what you think down in the comments shout out to everyone out there that leaves the likes the comments that is subscribed i appreciate all the support and i love you guys i hope you have a fantastic week until next time peace